Dr. Memari, and I'm going to perform the experiment for chloride groups, which is the qualitative analysis for cation. Uh, for the first experiment is the, the chloride groups, uh, which includes silver ion, lead ion, and the mercury one ion. Uh, we are going to precipitate these. These compounds are these ions do precipitate in acidic solution in chloride form. Chlorides are all soluble with exceptions to these three ions. Uh, the precipitate of the uh, chloride, um, okay. Chlorides are all soluble with exceptions to silver chloride, lead chloride, and mercury chloride. So we take advantage of this fact and solubility fact, and we can separate them from other ions. So we can selectively precipitate these three. That's why they are classified as one group of the, of the cations. Based on the procedure, we are going to take 10 drops of this uh, solution in this, we are working with the known solution. So I know that in this solution, I have the silver ion, um, lead ion, and the mercury ion. So I'm going to take 10 drops of this following the procedure, and I would add 10 drops of the deionized water. And I can count the drops, so you could count it for me. That's six, I need four more. Okay. To the solutions that I have in the, my deionized water looks like had already some chlorine, it turned cloudy, but it doesn't interfere with the reaction because I need to add the um, hydrochloric acid uh, to this solution now. So on the next step, I'm adding hydrochloric acid to this mixture. Um, to the uh, known sample that I have, I'm going to add um, six molar HCl uh, for the cations to precipitate. So I'm just following the procedure is asking me for two drops of the, uh, of the HCl. Now, on the next step, I need to uh, use the centrifuge. When we use the centrifuge, first we plug in the centrifuge, so we make sure that we have the power. We open the centrifuge lid and we place a test tube with a counterpart on the opposite direction in the centrifuge. So if I'm using slot number, space number four, then also I place another test tube with water, same mass, okay? Uh, not necessarily same volume, same mass. Uh, so I have to fill a test tube with some water, add some water to get to approximate same mass, same level. And I put like extra drop because I have solvent here. I place the two test tubes in opposite direction in the uh, centrifuge. Then I close the lid, secure it, turn it on for one minute. Based on the procedure, I can time the one minute. I can, uh, and after that, I turn it off. Or I can set that timer for one minute. If the centrifuge is not balanced, it's going to let you know, because it's going to start walking. Sometimes if it's not balanced, it would roll off the, the countertop and it would fall on the ground. So that's the reason you want to make sure your centrifuge is always balanced with countertop, uh, counterpart test tube. Okay. When you turn off the, the uh, centrifuge, you should not open the lid until it completely stops. So that's the that's important, that's the technique for using centrifuge. What centrifuge does by spinning the test tube that is mixture of solid and liquid, the solid would settle down completely and then the liquid portion, it gets separated. So we, when we take out, I expect to get a clear solution um, on top and the solid would be um, settled down completely, which 
we can decant it, we can separate it by just pouring off the liquid portion. Let's take the test tube with the solution out. Now, this, the, okay. After the centrifuge, now we have a clear solution and the precipitate in the test tube. I'm rotating so you could see the precipitate and you could see the clear solution. After the centrifuge, we have now a clear solution and a precipitate at the bottom of the test tube. Now, if I bring it close and rotate, you should be able to see the white precipitate and the clear solution. To test for complete precipitation, we want to make sure that there is no cation left in the solution. If I'm adding the reagent that I used before, which is HCl, I add one extra drop to it and to see if new precipitate forms. If new precipitate forms, the solution part, the clear solution part would turn cloudy again. If it does not turn cloudy, that means the precipitation is complete and the amount of HCl I added earlier was enough. So at this point, I'm going to, I do not need the centrifuge again, and I'm going to separate the clear solution by decanting into another test tube or a base container. So I'm going to use this as my base container. Okay. In this case, because we are looking for a known sample and we do not have a sulfide groups, I do not need the centrifugate, which is the clear solution. So I discard the um, centrifugate, but I keep the precipitate to analyze the chloride groups. The first ion that I want to analyze is the um, is lead. So lead is soluble in hot water. So I am going to add few drops of hot water. I need to add hot water, the best practice is to start the uh, preparing hot water from the beginning of the lab. So you have your hot water ready. Now we are adding the uh, 12 drops of uh, hot water and the 12 drop is coming from the, the procedure. So with, based on the procedure, I'm adding 12 drops of hot water. The sample, the precipitate is expected to dissolve if it's only lead, it would completely dissolve. Since we have lead, silver, and mercury, the silver chloride and lead chloride would not dissolve in hot water, only the lead chloride would dissolve. So if I centrifuge now, the solution that I have, it would contain lead ion. So I'm going to centrifuge now to get the lead ion separated. Okay, hot water is added, mixed and centrifuge. Now the centrifuge is done, we take it out uh, of the centrifuge. This time we are keeping the centrifugate because the centrifugate, which is the liquid is going to contain lead ions, we place in a test tube. For better practice, you should uh, label the test tube with like lead, so you know which test tube you're going to later on to take as the, as the lead. And to what is left, based on the procedure, we are adding hot water again and centrifuging one more time. Okay, after the centrifuge, we are collecting the centrifugate uh, into and replacing into the same um, test tube we had for the, um, for the lead. We save the precipitate for next step for um, silver and lead. 
and to the centrifugate, I'm adding a reagent of potassium chromate. With the potassium chromate, if lead is present, or since the lead is present, we should get a yellow colored precipitate. The yellow color, you see that potassium chromate is yellow color, but this is a solution, it's transparent kind of. But when it's precipitate, it's going to be yellow color and it would be cloudy. See the precipitate, that's the difference between the precipitate and the solution. It's not just the color, is the, the fact that is cloudy, is not transparent, you cannot see the other side of the, of the test tube. So it turns cloudy. So a solid has formed. A solid precipitate that forms, it's the lead chromate, and that's the indication or the observation that you need to record as the uh, presence or for proving the, the presence of lead, lead ion. Okay, after the centrifuge, we are collecting the centrifugate uh, into and replacing into the same um, test tube we had for the, um, for the lead. We save the precipitate for next step for um, silver and lead. And to the centrifugate, I'm adding a reagent of potassium chromate. With the potassium chromate, if lead is present, or since the lead is present, we should get a yellow colored precipitate. The yellow color, you see that potassium chromate is yellow color, but this is a solution, it's transparent kind of. But when it's precipitate, it's going to be yellow color and it would be cloudy. See the precipitate, that's the difference between the precipitate and the solution. It's not just the color, is the, the fact that is cloudy, is not transparent, you cannot see the other side of the, of the test tube. So it turns cloudy. So a solid has formed. A solid precipitate that forms, it's the lead chromate, and that's the indication or the observation that you need to record as the uh, presence or for proving the, the presence of lead, lead ion. To analyze for mercury and silver, to the precipitate we got from last step, we are going to add six molar ammonia, which is basically six molar ammonium hydroxide. Ammonia by itself is gas. So ammonium hydroxide, a solution of it, we are, is asking for eight drops. So I'm adding eight drops of ammonia and uh, four drops of deionized water. If a gray color precipitate or gray to black color precipitate appears, it indicates that we do have uh, mercury. So that is the presence, it shows the presence of the mercury. I'm holding against the white background for you to see it because it's a dark color. So that black color, it shows presence of, of the mercury. So mercury is also present. Now for the next step, we need to centrifuge this because silver ion dissolves when we add ammonia. So the solution contains silver ion. We need to centrifuge and test the clear solution for presence of um, silver. So let's centrifuge this. After centrifuging, I'm going to take the test tube out. It gives me clear solution. I will separate the centrifugate, which is expected to contain silver ion, into a test tube. For better practice, again, we must uh, we can label it. This is for the presence of silver ion. So to the centrifugate, which is the clear liquid, I'm adding six molar HNO3 following the procedure until the solution is acidic. When the solution is acidic, then the silver 
chloride precipitate will form again. And you see that it's turning cloudy now. A precipitate has, has formed. This is a known solution. And for the known solution, we know that we have silver and the precipitate form. For the unknown, we don't know if, it's, if the, the silver ion is present or not. How would we know how much of the acid should we add? So in that case, you have to make sure the solution is acidic. And acidic to litmus paper. So we are going to test the solution using a steering rod to you take a drop of the, uh, of the solution and you place it on litmus paper. If the litmus paper changes color to red color, then we have the solution is already acidic. For the unknown solution, if the, you have the unknown cations or unknown mixture, the precipitate doesn't form, the solution is acidic, that means there is no um, silver ion. If the solution is not acidic, you keep adding acid until the solution is acidic, and then you write your observation.